This is the lab of measuring the speed of sound. We're going to produce standing waves in a tube with a sound source. I'll use either a tuning fork or a speaker. I'll produce a constant frequency uh, sound and I'll place that sound over a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other end. I'll try to find the length of the tube that produces a standing wave inside the tube. I'll know there's a standing wave when I hear an increase in the volume of the tone. I can adjust the length of the tube by raising or lowering it in the water. The, the water end of the tube, of course, is the closed end, and the open end is up here where I will place the sound source. We'll use three frequencies of sound. I'll use a tuning fork for 1000 Hz, and then I'll use the speaker for 512 Hz and 256 Hz. I'll raise the tube, you listen for an increase in volume, look at the markings on the tube, find the length of the tube that you hear the increase in volume, and record that length of tube in your data sheet. What is happening when we hear the increase in volume? It happens when a standing wave is produced inside the tube. There are two requirements for a standing wave to occur. The first requirement is that there be a node at the closed end of the tube, and the second requirement is that there be an anti-node at the open end of the tube. That can only occur for a given wavelength at certain lengths of the tube. Here's the first possibility, where there's a node and an anti-node. Staying with the same wavelength, the next possibility is that the next anti-node, and the next possibility after that is that the next anti-node at the open end of the tube, and so on. The next possibility, again, is that the next anti-node. You can see the length of the tube is increasing each time by half a wavelength. But the first standing node occurs at a quarter of a wavelength. So the length of the tube for the first standing wave that I hear is at a length of lambda over 4, or one-fourth the wavelength of the sound that I'm hearing. The next standing wave occurs at three-fourths of the wavelength. Here is one full wavelength. You can see for this tube, that's three-fourths of a wavelength. For this tube, that's one-fourth of a wavelength. My third standing wave that I hear is at a wavelength plus another quarter, or five quarters of a wavelength. The next one is seven quarters of a wavelength. You can see that each standing wave occurs at half wavelength multiples, starting at one-fourth of a wavelength. In general, then, we can say that the length of the tube at any of the standing waves is equal to some number n times a quarter of the wavelength, where n is an integer equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on for each successive standing wave that we hear. So taking the equation in general, I'm going to solve this equation for lambda. Lambda will then equal 4L over n, Again, n is 1, 3, 5, 7, so on. And then I'm going to substitute this expression for lambda into my wave equation. Velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. Where I see the lambda, I'll substitute this in and get my equation for, to calculate the velocity of sound. The velocity of sound is equal to the frequency of the sound source that I'm using times 4 times the length of the tube where I hear a standing wave, an increase in volume, divided by the harmonic number, 1, 3, 5, 7, so on. Okay, now we'll use the three frequencies, f equals 1,000, and f equals 512, and f equals 256. Listen for the increases in volume, watch where the tube is, 
The numbers are marked on the tube starting at zero and in increments of five centimeters with markings every centimeter. Watch where the increase in volume occurs and measure, uh, excuse me, and record the uh, length of the tube in your data table. Then use the equation that we went over to calculate the velocity of the speed of sound. This is the way we draw the node, anti-node, node, anti-node. Anti Here's the closed end of the pipe. Here's the open end of the pipe. This is the easy way to draw it. But what is really happening to the air? Don't forget sound is a longitudinal compressional wave. So this is really what's happening. Nodes are where there is minimum movement of air and anti-node is where there is maximum, maximum movement of air. So you can f look here, these dots represent the molecules of the air. You can see that at a node, these dots are not moving. At this node, those dots are not moving. And at the anti-nodes, we get here and here, maximum movement of the air. Here is the URL where you can find this animation if you want to look at it in more detail. In your data table, you have a column for the frequency of the source of sound, a column indicating the harmonic number, n, your recorded values of length, and then here you calculate the value of 4L over n, then in this column multiply it by the frequency to get a value for velocity. Then what I'd like you to do is take all your values for velocity, which probably will be slightly different, one to the next and take an average of them to get an average value. Since you'll notice the values of the velocity are different, there must be some sources of error causing the variation in your values for V. So over here, please state what you think could be possible sources of this variation. In other words, possible sources of error.